Hi, my name is Patrick Reagan. The Disassembly and Reassembly of a Computer series shows you how to take computers apart and put them back together. The four videos will cover the mini computer, desktop computer, tower computer, and laptop computer. The first video is Disassembly and Reassembly of the Mini Computer. We are starting with the mini computer because it's the simplest computer of the four to disassemble and reassemble. Before we assemble and disassemble the mini computer, we'll identify the ports available on the computer and we will research the computer using the internet so that you can see what kind of information is available. The mini computer is one of the smallest desktop computers. Instead of containing a power supply, it uses a power brick to provide power. At the front of the computer, you can see that it is a Dell OptiPlex 3050. The front of the computer has an on-off power button and a hard drive LED. It has two USB 3.0 SuperSpeed Type-A ports and headphones and microphone audio ports. You can tell that the ports are USB 3.0 because of the SS logo in the blue color. At the back of the computer, you will find a power connector for the power brick. It also includes four more USB Type-A ports. Two of the USB ports with the blue color are SuperSpeed USB 3.0. It also has two video ports, an HDMI port, and a display port. For networking, this system has an RJ45 wired network connector and a wireless antenna. At the bottom of the picture, you will see a service tag, which is the computer serial number. Notice that there are no openings or covers for expansion slots, and I would not expect any for a mini computer. At the side of the computer, you will find the service tag number and labels identifying the system was sold with Windows and an Intel Core i5 7th generation processor. At the bottom of the computer, you'll find the model number D10U and D10U002 and some miscellaneous information that deals with UL listings and FCC ID 3165NGW, which identifies the type of wireless adapter used with this computer. As a side point, you'll see that the power brick supplies 65.0 watts, and the label at the bottom of the computer it shows the rating is 19.5 volts DC power at 3.34 amps. Power can be calculated as voltage times current. So if you take the 19.5 volts times the 3.34 amps is equal to 65.13 watts. So the computer can use up to 60 watts of power, which is what the power brick supplies. Many computer vendors, including HP, Dell, and Lenovo, provide a way to check hardware specifications, warranty information, and software drivers. In our example, I searched for the Dell warranty information and was able to quickly find the Dell Support Services and Contracts page. In the Identify Your Product, I put in the service tag or serial number in the Identify Your Product box and clicked Search. It shows the OptiPlex 3050 and support ended August 22, 2021, which has expired. So from the same page, I can also click Drivers and Downloads to view available drivers and support software provided by Dell for this computer. By clicking the View Product Specs link, I was able to view a detailed list of the hardware components. Some of those components are shown on the slide. It has a 512GB SATA solid state drive, 8GB of memory, an Intel Core i5-7500T, which is a quad-core processor that runs at 2.7 GHz. The system also has the Trusted Platform Module, or TPM. So right now we know a lot about the system, and we've not even opened it up yet. When taking a computer apart, don't be afraid to take some pictures while you take it apart so that you have something to reference when putting the computer back together. You should also consider having a container or multiple containers to hold screws and other small components. Lastly, you should wear your ESD strap when working inside a computer. In addition, if you have doubts about how to take the computer apart or put it back together, you should use your browser to search for service guides and videos for the specific model that you are working with from the vendor's website. The mini computer is made to minimize the use of tools. 
To open the computer itself, you just unscrew the thumb screw and slide the top. You can see the processor cooling solution and hard drive. You can also see the CMOS battery, which is a small battery about the size of the United States quarter. To remove the hard drive, you press the two finger latches and slide the drive away from the slot. On the figure on the left, you can see that the drive is keyed as shown highlighted with the red boxes that make sure you connect the drive correctly. To install the hard drive, you just reverse the process and slide the drive into the slot, making sure that the latches lock the hard drive in place. Instead of using screws to hold the hard drive in place, the hard drive is actually held in place with a plastic bracket that is flexible and contain small pins that are inserted into the holes on the hard drive, which are used to hold the drive firmly. Processors need to have a cooling solution that usually contains a processor fan and a heatsink. This fan solution has two tabs that you press together to release the fan. You also notice that the fan solution has two connectors to the motherboard. The colored wires power the fan while the black wires lead to a small speaker that is embedded on the fan. The heatsink is locked down with four screws. As you can see, the gray material that is on the processor's thermal paste, which provides a better thermal connection between the processor and the heatsink. It is usually recommended that if you remove the heatsink from the processor, you should replace the thermal paste. To remove the processor, there's usually some kind of latch that locks the processor in place. After the bracket is removed, you can then lift out the processor. To place the processor back into the slot, you would reverse the process. To make sure that you plug in the processor the correct way, you should look for pin 1, which is identified with a small triangle in the one corner. As you can see from the figure, it has a small gold triangle on the processor and a small white triangle on the motherboard. It also has two notches as indicated by the two smaller red boxes to ensure an easy way to align the processor correctly. The mini computer uses SO DIMMs, which is a smaller version of RAM chips. To remove a memory chip, you just pull the two latches to release the RAM chip, and then you pull the chip away from the system. To place the RAM chip, you place the chip in the slot at a 45 degree angle and press the chip down so that the latches lock the RAM chip in place. To ensure that the correct RAM chip is installed correctly, the memory chips are keyed as highlighted by the red box. While this motherboard does not have traditional expansion slot, I see that the motherboard has an internal wireless network card. The wireless card has a white wire that connects to the wireless antenna. Removing the wireless card is quite simple. 
You unscrew the holding screw and pull the card. To install the card, you insert the card at a 45 degree angle and secure the screw. When troubleshooting, the motherboard is one of the last things that you will isolate as a failed component because it takes the most work to remove since you have to remove several other components to get to the motherboard. In this case, you should have already removed the wireless adapter, the processor fan and heat sink, and the hard drive. There will be several screws that hold the motherboard to the case. The red boxes highlight the screws that hold the motherboard in place for this particular computer. This video shows you removing the motherboard. On the back side of the motherboard, the motherboard will have solder joints, electrical traces, and some electronic components. You must ensure that these components do not touch the metal case while the system is running. If these components touch the case, it can cause an electrical short that can damage the motherboard, other electronic components, and prevent the system from powering on. Therefore, the case includes some form of spacers that allow you to screw the motherboard to case while providing a gap between the motherboard and the case. This video will show installing the motherboard into the case. After you install the wireless card, you're ready to install the heatsink as shown in the video. You will then install the processor fan.
After installing the hard drive, you will put the lid or cover back onto the computer. When you are done, you should not have any screws left over. In summary, you should be able to look at the computer and identify the ports that the computer has and determine the manufacturing, model number, and serial number of the computer. With many manufacturers, you can find quite a bit of information on the internet and download drivers. When working inside a computer, you should disconnect power and use a properly connected ESD strap. To align the processor correctly, pin 1 is identified with a small triangle. In addition, the processor may have some alignment notches. The motherboard must have proper spacing from the case to prevent shorting the system. Make sure that you do not have any screws left over when you assemble the computer. Thank you for watching the disassembly and reassembly of the mini computer. The next video in the computer disassembly and assembly series is the desktop computer. Thank you.